all, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Dave Stevens back with you here after a week off. It's so good to be back in the house. Uh, this is a Cyber Underground where our mission is to dig deep and see how cybersecurity touches all of us in our everyday lives. And with us here today are the guys that saved my life. One of them last week, uh, Andrew, the security guy. What's up, everybody? Aloha. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you back, sir. brother. All right. It's we good need to be somebody back. driving the ship. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did a great job last week. Also with us, Jeff Milford, president of the ISC Squared. Where do you say ISC? To I see square. I yeah. see square yeah. Hawaii chapter. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thanks Good to have you back today. We're going to be uh, ramping up uh, social media again, how to keep yourself safe. Some of the settings, the tips and tricks and things that are set by default to be wide open that can really catch you by surprise. So uh, we'll go over Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And uh, if this is successful, we'll get some good feedback. We'll do it again. We'll do part three because this is probably one of the biggest security holes we have yeah. in our culture right now, right? Worldwide. Uh, I think, you know, the very first thing you do when you want to find out about somebody is just go check social media right straight away for them and see if they're there. That's right. Open source intelligence, yep. first stop. Open social media. source intelligence. I That's love right. It. That's yeah, right. It's uh, a common enemy for yeah. all of us. Yeah. Sure. I hadn't seen my sister in a couple of years. I went back home to see her and I was telling her, oh, so I saw you bought a couple of horses down in Brazil and <laughs> you've got this new dental <laughs> equipment in Yabba. Yeah, <laughs> and their eyes are getting big. How do you know all this stuff? Is the yes, social media. Right? It's all out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. checking in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some talking points that help. All right, let's, uh, let's take a couple of quick minutes here to, to talk about the uh, cybersecurity conferences, the industry standard conferences yeah. on cybersecurity, oh, yeah. InfraSec, a lot of stuff offensive happening. security, a lot of stuff happening. A lot of summer conferences happen because, you know, there's a lot of academics like me that, that go in the summer when... Is when, that why? They want smart people there. Well, I was wondering about if I'm smart, we're in trouble. <laughs> if I'm, <laughs> I better not be the best we can offer because <laughs> we're hosts. Uh, no, well, we have ShakaCon is our version here in sure. Hawaii. Oh, ShakaCon's yeah. coming up Monday through Thursday. You guys been? I yeah, I've been in the past. Yeah, you haven't been yet? No. So what did you think of it? I think it's great. Uh, it's a lot of different things. Uh, two years ago, we learned about the, the guys that actually hacked the Jeep were there doing their presentation, talking about how they did it, how they got grants to be able to uh, buy the vehicles and how they ended up uh, basically taking all the parts out of the vehicle and putting them on one of those um, four-wheel sport things because they just had to zip tie everything around. Uh, this is a lot classic. Of if I was Jeep, I'd be doing the, the big yeah. face palm. Oh, my gosh. Lock picking. I don't believe I incorporated that into my car. I like uh, elevator security. You know, basically, don't ever climb out of the top panel because there's <laughs> stuff up there that can really hurt you. Uh, a lot of neat stuff, but it, it's also really technical, too. There are a lot of developers talking about vulnerabilities mm -hmm. they've discovered and, and things like that. But it's a lot of fun, and, and as with all conferences, a lot of times when you're at work, you tend to get blinders on, and you get to a conference, and you start talking to all these people, and you realize, wow, you know, we're all facing the same challenges. And the world's bigger than you might have thought. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so that's, yeah. that's a big benefit of the conferences. So did you go through the trainings or just uh, the no, just, just the, the I couldn't get my boss to give me that They're much always time expensive Tony yeah. 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 and justifying it you know system engineer yeah I can justify a couple of days but the, some of the in-depth training uh, yeah they start about $1,600 yeah, right. for the cheap ones and they go up from there ah. and then uh, of course uh, this summer we're going out to uh, Black Hat DEF CON that's fake this show will wow. be broadcasting uh, the July 7th show July 7th, 28th, sorry, July 28th, from the floor of Caesar's Palace, where DEF CON is held. DEF CON's an offensive security conference. I'm going to change my ticket and just stay another day. I, I wish you would. Be I'd love to have you on the show. Yeah, 4 p.m. to bed. I actually time. forgot about that. I'm not going to fly late. I'll check. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got the whole rig. We're going to, all the parts are on order. We're going to set up a studio. We got a media pass with DEF CON. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. So DEF CON and Black Hat are two. Uh, I wouldn't say diametrically opposed, but maybe theologically opposed uh, <laughs> conferences, right? Um, so Black Hat usually runs first, and back-to-back -back at a different hotel, but sharing the same end beginning date is DEF CON. And the Black Hat is the more formal, InfoSec, defensive security, blue team. Uh, this is how we want to defend. Here's what's coming up next. Here's the latest malware conference. A lot of trainings, but uh, FBI, CIA, NSA, everybody goes there. Right. That is a very formal, very, you know, there's a business hall with like, it's a very vendor. It's a vendor friendly conference. Yes. Uh, DEF CON, on the other hand, is the Wild West. <laughs> it's, it's organized 
barely managed chaos, but it's an offensive security um, deal. Have you guys ever been this? Yeah, yeah. I've not been uh, there yet. I know kind of like, you never take your phone. Uh, no, you never you take, take anything <laughs> electronic at all. Well, first of all, it's kind of like a Comic Con for the cyber guys. Yeah. I mean, people show up in costume. Wow. Sonic the Hedgehog was there last year, as, as well as I think Sailor Moon. I, I don't know why, but uh, they dress up to go to this event. And there's the same thing as the Shaka Con. They offer some training, uh, the Social Engineering Village. So all their little workshops that you're free to go to are called villages. And the Social Engineering one was fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, as I sat there, it took 28 minutes for this young lady to socially engineer a hack into Deloitte and Touche. Awesome. Wow. On a Saturday afternoon. Awesome. Wow. Right? I mean, just a phone and a laptop, and she's in in 28 minutes. And that's Deloitte and Touche. Yeah. Come on. That's what what defense do we have? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she Ouch. was so good. Uh, I learned how to pick locks there. And now I incorporated lock picking into my ethical hacking class for physical security, which is a deal. lot of fun. Um, but two very different conferences. So we're going to do the funky one. The, the Friday falls on the second day of DEF CON, wow. 4 p.m. Nevada time, which is pretty much just ramping up for them. So there's uh, workshops and training, then there's these little villages, and then there's social activities that run till 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and sometimes all night. Mm. Uh, they have movie night, they have uh, dances, they have and drinking contests. I mean, just weird <laughs> stuff out of, out of nowhere. It's uh, Vegas. It is Vegas, baby. And we've added the element of now the Vegas is, is uh, legal, pot legal, right? Oh, that's right. for the, uh, yeah, the, the recreational, the recreational use. Use. You that's can't right. smoke it or you're not supposed to take edibles on the strip. I see. But there's no restrictions on doing it and then coming to the conference. I see. So, wow. so you, be really you think it's going to be a little crazier? This is going to be a little, a little crazy. more crazy, maybe. <laughs> this is going to be a little, little bit more crazy wow. than, than we've seen yeah, before. That. So that's coming up. Uh, so I'll be out there on July 24th, going through uh, the end of the DEF CON conference on July 30th. We'll broadcast live on, the on 28th. July 28th. And so the our students will be there. Awesome. So the Cyber Underground will be interviewing the cybersecurity students that just got their associates in IT and their cybersecurity certificates of uh, achievement. Wow. And uh, one, at least one of them got, just got their certified ethical hacking test done. Nice. Which is, and, and I'm loving it. It's Cap more interesting CC. than that. <laughs> no, CapCC is awesome. CapCC, Cap the Alliance. Kicking butt. Um, so yeah, we're going to be there. Everyone tune in. If you can't make it, then, then watch the show. And what else in Cyber Hui happening? Cyber Hui, do not have any details yet. Okay. I just, I just talked to Reynold uh, this morning, so we'll get some more Good information deal. about Cyber Hui. But they said they, so Reynold said he wanted to put some Cyber Hui people on the show. So we'll definitely get some Cyber Hui uh, young folks on the show to tell us Good. that effort in here in the islands, awesome. which is going to be, you know, they're ramping back up. They're going to do some cybersecurity camps this summer mm -hmm. and next summer, and they handle the Cyber Patriots, which is the high school cybersecurity training, which I really love, that we're getting into the kids' lives, ninth to 12th yeah. grade. I think we should get in sooner. Probably going to have to. I, I think because kids at, what, 10 years old are holding a smartphone. Yeah. And they, they need to know this is not they just do. as magical, yeah. ubiquitous wand like Harry Potter carries around. So yeah. it uh, is in their hands. It is in their hands, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that, that brings us perfectly into uh, our, our segue into today's topic. You know, we, we talk about social media. The top three that I want to talk about today, of course, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and for a number of reasons, not just the settings that you can uh, get you to bite you in the butt by leaving them default wide open or setting them the wrong way, but also the information you post that is still publicly available. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, here's a little trick that Facebook pulled, and I, I'm at the same time disgusted and in admiration of the trickiness of it. It was brilliant. So if you guys know how to do any web programming, um, if a website, a domain name that you go to, like Amazon.com, if you're on their website, on your browser, Amazon has permission by default in web programming language to write cookies to your machine. Mm -hmm. Has an identifier, just a serial number so they know you were there, what your username is, IP address, some basic information. It's not, it's relatively innocuous. For, okay. for you to do shopping on the web and things like that. However, if I go to a website that can write a cookie to my, my, uh, my computer, if I have in my coding, if I've made this web page and I've framed out, that means I am doing a sub host mm -hmm. of another domain on my page. Okay. So I'm putting their content on my page. That little frame is their domain 
And now my page, because I have their domain on it, now has permission to write cookies to my hard drive. Mm -hmm. If you ever see a, um, a website that says log in with Facebook or post or mm -hmm. share to Facebook, yeah. right? That's their button coming from their site. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they have permission to write to your hard drive. Now, here's how they've been using it. I didn't know this. This is the trickiest. Good job, and I'm disgusted at the same time. Uh, <laughs> they can track logged off users and what sites you're visiting. Wow. So now they know you're yeah, so you logged off Facebook, but, but because they've got the cookie that, that you left behind. Any place their button right. appears, right. you now have said, hey, Facebook, <laughs> I'm browsing this website, and uh, here's the pages I'm visiting. Yeah. And they know you. Yeah. Even though you're logged off, this partnership through Facebook. You know, wow. So this tracking stuff happens all the time, and I don't think people actually realize this is going on. And there is no setting in Facebook to turn this off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They have control. Yeah. You've consented through their terms of... Of, of uh, their, their terms agreement, of use, yeah, terms, agreement, terms of use, right, uh, to, this, to this tracking. These, there's no off the grid on the web. The so, you're, you're so you know, the, the user habits are valuable. And that's definitely what they want to know about, right? Yeah. They're, and they're reselling that information. They're building a profile of your you and what you do with that information. Data harvesting. Yeah. I don't think people, people stop to think that when they're using a free service, there's, n there's no free lunch. Oh, <laughs> you're paying for it in one way or another. That's right. And that's right. most people don't stop to think. Whatever you're putting out there, somebody's figured out a way to make money from it. Yeah. Sure. And oh, yeah. the privacy's out the window. You can't take stuff back once you put it out there. All these things that you know some of us take for granted, a lot of people just don't don't consider. Right. So that's, that's a good point. So as soon as you put something on a website, no matter what it is, even if you say I'd like this private, can be indexed by people who don't care if that's the setting it's as private. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can still see that. So Google might pay attention to the no robots tag in HTML, but nefarious people wouldn't. They'll just keep on digging. Yeah. And that's where we get the deep web. The people said, please don't index me, but people do anyway. Mm -hmm. And now we have the deep web indexes of people's, you know, military records or whatever. Oh, so the county so. court heart and county courthouse, your divorce records mm -hmm. or or something else that you get arrested or, or you get a parking ticket. They know. It's all it's public information and it's part of the deep web now. Yeah. And so people don't really realize. Hey, my sister bought some horses. <laughs> they know. I told my, my, my sister, stop checking in when you're on vacation. Hey, here we are in Barcelona. Because yeah. <laughs> oh, you're not at home. You're not at home. Yeah. And the picture includes her, her husband, my father, yeah. you know, my mother, and my nephew. Nobody's home. That's right. And now we know yeah. you're out of the country, so I and, can do all kinds of stuff. And like we talked about last time, because we're good people, we don't think like the hackers. So she put on there that she had bought horses in Brazil. That's a perfect spear fishing opportunity. Somebody can figure out a way to leverage that little bit of information, get her to click on the link, and boom, the machine's toast. Right, we have more horses for sale, or hey, are these the horses you, mm -hmm. you bought before? Click on this picture, yeah. and ta-da, you I, know, I, I've got a horse and, and, I, and it's not acting right. To, is, can you recommend somebody? Or here's who I use. Click. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's as easy as that, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a little break, pay some bills. We'll be right back after one minute. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king. Come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You could talk to God. Go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You can break rocks. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Hope you enjoyed the break. Let's get into this now. We're going to examine the, some of the settings that could get you into trouble on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, let's start with Andrew and LinkedIn. 
Oh, LinkedIn. The, LinkedIn. The happy home of all the business, business <laughs> it's people Facebook out there. And it's, got, it's gotten so much worse. You know, you, you know, a few years ago, you remember it was quite, uh, I think, fairly well respected. And then, yeah. and nowadays, you still see people posting their meals, and you know, it's it's getting this Facebooky feel. Right. But the the one thing that you talked about already is people posting more personal information than perhaps they should. People, I think, sharing um, some of the the their hours that they're available, things like that. That oh. you really don't want the world to know when you should be in your office because you're not someplace else that they could rob, like your home, things like that. So, What about your skill sets when you list your skill sets? Sure. You're working at a company and you administer a Windows 2000 server and you administer you know, the newest uh, yeah. Outlook on that. And, and, and what do they know then? What, the, what they know your infrastructure, uses, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they know what attacks yeah. to use, right? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a danger. Yeah, that, and, and also the other, the other thing I think people don't, don't take advantage of it. And I mean, there's some marketing folks that would perhaps disagree if you're trying to build a personal brand or something, but um, I, I don't like people that leave their their connections open, right? So when they, if I connect to them and I can go see all the people that they're connected to, that's, people will use that as a mail list. So if I connect to you, I can see everyone you're connected to and their profile yeah. and their information. But you but you should turn that off, and, yeah. is what is my point. You that's know, a setting. And, and a lot of people leave that wide open. So as you go into the privacy settings yeah. of their account, and start reading those things. Yeah. What, what do those things actually do? Exactly. And, yeah. and you know, you want to turn it off. You should, I think, also turn. You can, you cannot have uh, changes that you make to your page publish automatically, but you have to turn that off. That's on by default as well. That default, and, you're telling everybody, this is yeah. everything that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And you can also, you can, uh, and I don't. Now I use the, I pay like five bucks. I pay for the next version up, which allows me to move stealthily, so people don't actually see when I'm looking at stuff on LinkedIn either. So you're the anonymous viewer. I'm the. Uh -huh. <laughs> looking all the time. So um, you know, there's there's that piece as well. So there's there's um, and there's I uh, take another thing. There's two-factor authentication available with LinkedIn today, and so I, I do recommend that you turn that on. Well, let's talk about so that for a second. So what is two-factor authentication? Like? Yeah. So you can two use factor. Google Authenticator. So anytime that you need to log in, there will be a code on onto your phone that you can then it'll ask you to enter. So that that way, and it's the phone that you registered, so it knows that should be your phone anyway. Now if somebody you should have it in your hand. Yeah. If yeah. somebody took it from you, then they, they could obviously try to get into your account, they could figure out your password, and then they, they would have that code. But, but it gives you one more layer of protection yeah. and keeps someone from stealing your profile, right? You don't want someone to become you on LinkedIn and then start saying things or, or uh, you know, maybe uh, attacking other people from your profile right. or, or disparaging them or there's no telling what people could put up. Or disparaging you. Or disparaging you. Like, you, you know, making, making a fool of yourself. Right, yeah. And people are like, wow, you've really gone downhill in your self-esteem lately, man. <laughs> and for us security professionals, if that happens to us, it's just it's pretty much telling the world, don't hire this guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then, then there's that. Yeah, the, the, uh, the reputation factor. The reputation, sure. yeah. The and reason you're PR. that's something you can't get back. No. It's, and, it's and, and, and pick a strong password anyway. Use like Dash Lane and go up there and just bang one out. Walk, bang the ones you're using out and see. It'll tell you how many days it takes a computer to hack it. You know, get, once you get out about 12 or 16 letters, that thing will say 39,000 years or something. That's what. That's the kind of passwords you want to be using. And most people are going to pass a phrase. Yeah, and yeah. Make yeah, up a phrase a, of some type. Mary had a little lamb yeah. and replace some of the characters with specials, yeah. you know, and at science number, underscore, yeah. whatever yeah. like that. And uh, even a blank space. Counts. Yes, and, uh, and a lot of what, a lot of uh, logins will allow you to use spaces, so that's a good idea. Yes, as well. yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Try try what you're using on Dashlane. It's free. Just go Dashlane and go, and you can type in these passwords and test them for strength. You got to be careful about some of those sites that aren't hosted by reputable companies. Yeah, they're looking to build what's called rainbow tables. Right. So the they rainbow table rainbow is, is <laughs> you're putting in your password and they're hashing it by MD5, SHA1, yeah. mm -hmm. all these different hashing algorithms, and they're making a table. So if somebody only has the hash of your password that they've hacked, now they can compare it to the password that produced the hash, yeah. and that's, well, now I have your yeah, yeah. You think Dashlane's selling that? I was thinking that they probably are. No, I hope not. It is for free. free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. Yeah, they're making money somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I hope it, hopefully it's just PR. Yeah. Any other recommendations on LinkedIn? Um, that's what I got for now. Okay. Throw, throw in some foreign language words. Oh, that's a great yeah, one. Well, foreign language because, and because if they're going to yeah. use a, an English dictionary and you're throwing French and Spanish words in there, now they've got to load up some different dictionaries and 
who's going to think of that except people watching this at my suggestion? Yeah, don't make it too hard, though, so you have to write it down on a post-it note and stick it to your computer. Yeah, and, 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 and if, you, if you have on there that you have French as a second language, do it in German. Yeah, yeah good one. Yeah. That's yep. right. Good one. Okay, let's talk about Twitter. Okay, let's talk about Twitter. Um, I don't tweet, personally, because I'm... Fired, but uh, you should. Uh, we need... We need, we need actually, 144. Actually, I do have an account. I set it up a couple years ago. Somebody started following me within the first hour and it scared the <laughs> I'm like I, I haven't even I mean, tweeted I anything yet. Yeah. 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 I haven't yeah. tweeted yet and somebody's following me. I, I, I guess they liked my handle which I'm not going to say right now. Um, okay. But basically the the I didn't find a lot of things in there but for privacy settings there's public and private tweets. I think we know that our commander in chief is probably public tweeting, mm -hmm. um, but if people are following you, you can set the, the setting to private so that only people that you've accepted will be able to see your tweets. Probably not a bad idea. Can you block people that are harassing you? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. you can. All right. Yes, you can. That's good. A um, couple of things I found out. Um, if you make your tweets public, if you have any pending following requests, the people aren't going to have to, you can't accept them automatically. They're going to have to ask to follow you afresh. But the other thing is if you protect your tweets and then later say, oh, you know what, I want to make them public again, all your protected tweets become public. Oh, it goes back retroactively. And exactly. Wow. Again, these are things well, that most people aren't going to think of. And then I think about that later on. But Good all point. of a sudden, how did that get out there? Oh, that change that I made. And I was also reading that um, Twitter just recently changed some of their policies. They used to keep stuff for 10 days. Now they keep it for 30 days. Uh, they share a lot of the information they're collecting. Again, free stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can opt out of that sharing with Twitter. You have to know who they're sharing with and contact them to opt out. Because again, that's another one of these defaults. If you look at your credit card agreements, all those types of things, it says, sure, you can opt out. But by default, you're opting in just right. by, by agreeing to our terms of service contract. So it's like the, the advertisements on TV about the, the prescription drugs. Don't take this if you know you're allergic to it or the ingredients in it. Like there's an ingredients list on the on the drug. Good How point. are you supposed to know if you're yeah. allergic to it? I found out recently that I'm allergic to that particular drug. I got the highs for three days. Oh, well, that's uh, and, now you know. Now I know. <laughs> that one off. Yeah. Yep. That one off. Yeah. Check. <laughs> but but again, you you're opting in, and who who reads all that verbiage? That's mm -hmm. it's designed so that it's better you're than not going to do that. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So. Try to be as aware as you can. Opt out when you can so that you're not sharing your information. I've always believed in privacy. I try to be as private as I can. It's difficult. I understand the, the desire and the, the benefits for people, especially families doing Facebook and things like that because they can stay in touch, catch up on the news like I learned about my sister earlier. Um, but just try to, try to, don't necessarily think like a hacker, but understand that nothing's free. Then somebody's making money from you some in some way. And it's public and it's forever. Yes. Yeah, and yes. I was, I was going to say, you can apply to have your account verified, too, so that they know that that's really you. Yeah. And yeah. you can also do that with LinkedIn. I meant to bring mm -hmm. that up. There are fraudulent LinkedIn accounts out there where people advertise that there's someone, and it's it's, a, and it's an account that's been created by someone else, and they're trying to join to you to get information from you. So oh. I forgot about that little piece. And, and that happens all the time in Facebook. Is it that just a, happened it's, this it's week for that as well. Where I'm working. Yeah. They, they sent out a thing saying there's a thing on Facebook saying if you want uh, discount insurance, f here's here's how you can get and it. This person. And the company said, hey, no, 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 we have nothing to do with that. We're, we're working with Facebook to get to get to rid get of that it. Off, yeah. But that wow. just, just literally happened this week. Very clever. Well, let's mm. talk about Facebook for a little while. And I was telling you guys, my, my sister goes places on vacation and decides to check in. And checking in geotags you yeah. at the location wherever you are using the, your phone's geo coordinates, mm -hmm. right. and uh, and you know she'll take a picture. Hey, we're checking in. We're we're out of state. We're out of country. And here's my <laughs> husband and my father and my mom and my son. And, and now we know two households are completely empty. <laughs> and I, I told him, don't check in. And to, you know, post it after you come back. Hey, we were in mm -hmm. you know Cam 
Canada or something, you know, here's British Columbia, look how beautiful it is, here's a picture of us. By the way, we're home now. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> we're no longer out there. Uh, don't rant. Facebook is famous for ranting. Mm. And if you've got your settings wrong, that's forever. It will be indexed and it can be used against you in employment. Exactly. Where people yeah. will use that against you when you apply for a job. Hey, mm. I, we like you, but we understand that uh, you know you, you went off on this. Well, Angus may be completely unemployable. Oh, he's point. unemployable, man. We're not going to hire yeah. Angus. Well, yeah, he's not going to be happy to hear that. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about a couple of the privacy settings that can, uh, that can get you. By default, there's uh, two settings. Who can see my stuff? and who can contact me, mm. by default, are set to everyone. Mm. Which means anyone on the web doesn't have to be a Facebook member. Just anybody. Oh, can they contact can, you like an advertiser. So you, you register with the email, you give them your phone number for two-factor mm. authentication. This means both of those are searchable. Mm -hmm. so, wow. so what a, a researcher did, a security researcher, I, I just read about this. There's an application programming interface, or API for Facebook, and he used that and generated random phone numbers to search Facebook for all these people that had that set to everyone. Oh. And every time I got a phone number, did he get? I, um, tens of thousands, millions. Oh, wow. Wow. Back with their first, last name, their address, where they worked, sure. and all the public information that's available, wow. he got that back. Mm -hmm. And just by generating random phone numbers. So wow. got to set that to, now there's friends, friends of friends, and everyone. Everyone is the public. Yeah. Friends and friends of friends means anybody that's a friend yeah, you of you. Yeah, you don't want that one either. Yeah, you don't want that one either. You so just set you it to friends. You want me only so you can just look at yourself. And <laughs> Andrew only. That's yeah, just me only. Andrew. <laughs> well, you can also uh, You can be a legend in your own mind. Who can look me up is set by uh, default to everyone. Everyone. Uh -huh. Yeah, so everyone, if you set everyone, they can, they can see uh, all your contacts, all your information, mm -hmm. and everything you posted. So that's, that's not a good one to have available. Um, who can add things to my timeline and who can see things on my timeline? My timeline is the sequential mm -hmm. order of things that you've been posting. Some people tag you in Barcelona. <laughs> that's right. It's not hey, good. I saw Drew. Yeah. He's in St. Petersburg. Right? It's beautiful there. <laughs> it's on your timeline. It's, that's per uh, permanent. Um, I would recommend you do the two-factor authentication. They have that there. Um, and there's several ways you can do two-factor. There's mm -hmm. also, you can get a, a list of uh, reactivation codes. Permanent codes that are associated only with your account. You store them someplace else, write them down physically in a wallet or notebook. Mm -hmm. And then if you're stuck somewhere and you can't log into your account, you don't have to go through all the, the hoops. You just have that code and you can reaccess your account mm -hmm. from another device. That's that's okay. That's if you lock down your, your social media, you're probably uh, going to live. So it's, I don't think it's a crisis. <laughs> I would also, on both Twitter and LinkedIn, do this get uh, uh, unrecognized login alerts. So this is the first time you've mm -hmm. logged in from, oh, from your this device. Yeah, 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 they, they notify for that. And yeah. then they tell you where it's from. So if you get an alert and, hey, Central Montana, wait, I don't know anyone in Missoula and I've never been there. So mm -hmm. I better log myself out, change my password, change some settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LinkedIn, you can actually go in and see what, where, you, how many sessions are logged in and where. I forgot about that. So well, we're going to have to wrap this up. We're out of time. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have to do social media part three. We're going to have to come back. Thanks, guys, for joining me. This is Thanks. a good, good show, and uh, I hope to have you both on really soon. Don't forget to join us on the 28th. Hope you can make it. Okay. And hope you can make it. Sounds good. Okay, hello, guys. Okay, everybody, stay safe. <laughs>